بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته This is Riyad Razazi welcome you all to Homemade Happiness This is episode number 10 السلام عليكم ورحمة الله I'm just gonna give a minute or two for more people to join إن شاء الله أيوة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله um, we're both live on Facebook and on Instagram and this is about the 10th episode of homemade happiness it's just starting a little slow so um, I just want to give some time just a minute or two for more people to join inshallah wa alaykum as salam wa barakatuh اهلا وسهلا مرحبا بكم مرحبا اهلا وسهلا we took a break for about a week and we're back into our uh, online regular series uh, homemade happiness this series which we started in uh, in Ramadan and we have not completed it yet um, this also started right after we completed the uh, right after we completed the end of time so just to give you a, a quick uh, review of uh, especially those who just joined they um, uh, they uh, maybe they're new to this uh, program so alhamdulillah we've been having two online programs one called uh, tafsir bites it's a short tafsir program it's very short i mean short as 15 20 minutes or so it's not deep to see it and then the second program is called homemade happiness right this is the second program that we've been having um you know since ramadan alhamdulillah uh, in this homemade happiness we um again quick preview this homemade happiness it's a it's a it's a family series it's a family series alhamdulillah uh, involves every member of the family on how to make our homes like you know uh, like in our homes how to make our homes like the homes of of the Prophet how the home of the Sahaba how to bring back serenity how to bring back um, you know happiness and joy uh, how to bring back uh, um, uh, peace in our homes and those alhamdulillah who've their you know happy homes how to maybe you know inshallah ta'ala uh, have more happiness into your homes because here we're we're sharing with you a lot of very you know golden advice on how to uh you know energize and and you know that relationship with your with your children with your spouses with your parents with your in-laws you know everybody will get a peace uh, through the series inshallah ta'ala whether you're a mom you're a dad whether you're uh, a sibling like a sister or brother whether you're a uh, uh, um, um, husband wife uh, grandfather grandmother uh, father-in-law mother-in-law uh, uh, whether you are uh, a a stepfather or a stepmother everybody will have you know some some Thing to take up from this uh, series inshallah ta'ala you know everybody as i mentioned that whether your father mother stepfather stepmother uh, father-in-law mother outlaw i mean in-law uh, um, um, son brother husband wife everybody inshallah ta'ala will have to take you know and will take some some golden you know uh, advice and and tools and 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 a lot of uh, proactive alhamdulillah very very proactive advice on on how to uh, that you could use in your life inshallah ta'ala at some point so my brothers and sisters uh, again welcome back riyad razazi welcome you back to homemade happiness this is episode number 10 this is session number 10 and today inshallah ta'ala the title of this episode is no to hostility 
no to hostility because if uh, uh, um, you know remember I mean, let me give you just a quick preview you know a review of what we talked about you know in the previous session and you know, on how to uh, you know maybe educate and discipline your children how to raise your children uh, we talked about some uh, current um, uh, methods that are used at home such as uh, uh, maybe blame such as uh, provocative uh, provocative advice such as just threats I gave examples of all those uh, lectures um, uh, warnings these are some methods that some parents are using you know today with their children uh, how to you know sometimes they ridicule them uh, to give them advice sometimes they compare them this is the a lot of parents do this you know comparing you know their children with others maybe even compare them to their own siblings or compare them to their cousins or compare them to their friends or their neighbors uh, but then uh, I gave some counter uh, more productive uh, advice on how to uh, maybe or methods on how to raise or maybe how to uh, not how to raise your kids such as you know the the if you remember the the principle of uh, of appreciation of and taqdeer and ihtiram uh, of uh, the principle of of appreciation and respect you know this is if you remember this was foundation number nine because throughout the series all i'll be doing is suggesting or providing you with some sort of principles and foundations that you could use in your homes inshallah ta'ala these are foundations we could all adopt these foundations inshallah ta'ala all of us you know i will not be able to solve every case of every problem at home you know in different homes because they're different you know it's it's case by case scenario maybe something that would work with you in your home may not work with somebody else right people have their own issues and whatnot but if we were to adopt these foundations this is what we call them foundations usus qiyam in arabic right so you could use them it's 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 like a joker you know you could use it anybody could use it the first if you remember the first uh, foundation was to worship together worship uh, allah azawajal you know together as a family worship allah azawajal together uh, um, value your family is uh, foundation number two value in the family foundation number three to live with mercy rahma to live with mercy foundation number four understand that family is uh, is uh, is a blessing of Allah Azza wa Jal. Your family is ni'mah from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Number five, talking about the pivotal role of the father. We spoke and we had like maybe two or three sessions just talking about that pivotal role of the father. And then the number six, the father, the friend. This is another foundation. The father, the friend. And then number seven, talking about the moms, the mothers are the engines for motivation and then talking about number eight the the uh, the language of compassion a beautiful language that we could use with our children with our not only our children our friends our loved ones you know the language of compassion uh number nine respect and appreciation that's number uh, foundation number nine and this is with regard to you know using it with your children with your loved ones and today, inshallah ta'ala, we'll be talking about foundation number 10. It's called no to hostility. No to al-unf. In Arabic, we call it al-unf. La lil-unf. No to hostility. Right? Um, this, is, this is some of the, you know, foundations that we have spoken about so far. And then we gave, we gave a lot of examples from the, from the time of, from the life of the Prophet Muhammad, uh, you know, the examples that the Prophet Muhammad, used in terms of you know uh, dealing with kids dealing with youth dealing with with his uh, daughters and dealing with his children dealing with you know his grandchildren sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then we'll be talking at some point inshallah ta'ala we're talking about husbands and wives uh, we will be talking about the youth and friends the youth and sexuality oh yes oh yes in this session i will be talking to the youth this topic that maybe people will try to refrain from people will try to stay away from people especially like shuyukh they would not like to talk about i'm going to be talking about it in this session inshallah ta'ala in not in the session but in this series the youth and sexuality the youth and lust yes we'll be talking about that as well 
and we'll be talking still more about the parents and more about the parents and more about those both together because we spoke about the mom and we spoke about the dad but I will talk about them together you know as parents inshallah ta'ala um, we gave some advice I gave some advice such as uh, uh, um, try yourself as a dad you know this is advice on proactive advice on how to uh, uh, raise your children you know if they were to make a mistake you know try جرب, you know uh, uh, try give it a try yourself uh, uh, and 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 I we I gave the other advice such as uh, um, um, before you give them directions uh, fix your problem yourself uh, prove it to them yourself uh, uh, um, motivate them you know uh, um, use their talents you know, you, if you remember, all these are recorded so that you may, if you want, you want to go back to them, they're all recorded on my, you know, YouTube channel. They're all, all on, my, on the Facebook as well, my page. All the series, nine sec lectures, they're all recorded. Alhamdulillah, you can always go back to them. Uh, using encouragements, using praise, you know, this is some another, uh, um, you know, method that you could use with your children, with your loved ones. In Arabic, we call it tahfiz, at tahfiz. بالتحفيز, you know, using uh, um, encouragements and and you know, to, to to as a form of of uh, of raising your kids, you know, and directing uh, you know your kids. Um, open dialogue is another method that you could use, you know, uh, and this method is 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 a wonderful method, you know. Um, um, Writing a letter to your to your to your son to your daughter to your daughter you know could be another method you know so there's quite a few methods so my brothers and sisters now I want to move since this is was just like an intro you know giving a chance for more people to join as an intro but now inshallah we're gonna move to session number ten episode number ten of homemade happiness and the title of this session is no to hostility la linuf no to force what does that mean yani, does that mean I, I i should not beat my my child up i should not beat my children up no to hostility no to hostility i know that sometimes i know that sometimes your children may do something so bad that you really want to beat them up <laughs> i know exactly how that feels i know how that feels they do something really, really, really so bad that you really like. They deserve a, a nice beat up, you know. They deserve it. Um, but we need to set some standards. We need to set some standards, and the standard that we need to set today, inshallah Taala, that beating is unacceptable, especially those you know like some people, some parents. They beat up their children as if they're really like punching a, 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 a boxing, you know, like a back, a punching back, like a boxing back, or a kickboxing back. Really, like the, really, uh, I mean, Alhamdulillah, inshallah, he may, you know, it would not, you know, apply to you. But I know, I know that there's some parents who really like beat up their children, like you never seen before. Right. Um, Yes, I was one of them at some point in my life, you know, and my dad, when he used to beat us up with a, with a belt, with a uh, with bunch of things, whatever he had in front of him, he would just use it, you know, and beat us up, right? But let's set that standard, and the standard today is, my brothers and sisters, beating is unacceptable. Khalas. Beating is unacceptable. Unacceptable. Brother Kiko, Kamal. Brother Kamal. Algerians, Moroccans, you know, sometimes Pakistanis, Indians, I would say more Pakistanis, you know, uh, Arabs in general, but I would say, yeah, yeah, Algerians, we, we have hot blood, a little bit of hot blood, uh, a little bit of a hot blood, you know, you know, we, we like to, you know, use our hands a lot sometimes, no, so no to hostility, no to force with our loved ones, Beating is unacceptable. Khalas. Why? And I will give you some uh, 
something in you know I, I say no but then I will give you other you know uh, methods inshallah ta'ala to use instead I, I don't I, I'm not gonna just say no and then and then I don't 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 uh, sort of like talk about this issue and don't mention it and and then just let it you know no I would definitely inshallah ta'ala give you some alternatives some alternatives to you know beating up your children instead right uh, in fact those who live in the west you know that this is, it's illegal huh those who live in the west they know that it's illegal uh, I, you know there was this funny guy who says uh, you know um, he says you know his dad used to beat him up so he came in you know, now to Canada and you know, living in Canada he went to school with some white guys and the white guy says oh your dad beat you up next time he wants to beat you up just tell him I'm gonna call social services I'm gonna call social services really he says yes just tell your dad the next time he wants to beat you up just call social services or call tell him I'm gonna call 911 right I'm gonna call 911 so this Indian boy is going back to his dad he's happy and then you know did something right you know and then his father's gonna beat him up you know he goes ah and then the son says dad if you touch me I'm gonna call social services this is what I'm gonna call 911 and he says ah you've been hanging with John and Bob and James and Tony and you know all those guys that's cool the white guys the dad knows You've been hanging out with John and Bob, huh? You touch me, I'm gonna call social services. I'm gonna call 911. Then the dad said, okay, what time is it now? Uh, it will take 911 15 minutes to get here, right? If you call them, it's gonna get them about 15 minutes to get here. In that 15 minutes, I will kill the heck out of you. I will beat the heck out of you. And then by the time they come, it's fine. <laughs> so the dad was a smart guy too, right? <laughs> it's fine. You want me, you know, you want to call the, it's going to take them 15 minutes. In that 15 minutes, I'll show you what I can do. <laughs> so the the guy, he did not, he didn't learn what to say now after that, right? Because his, his friends told him, you know, the white guys, they said, if your dad you know wants to beat you up just tell him you know tell him threaten him i'm gonna call 911 you're gonna call you know social services <laughs> so um <laughs> well you know what it's gonna take them that much you know to come home it's gonna take them that long to get to your home by the time they get to your home you know but all i said my sisters and brothers again we need we need to set the standards and the standards are Beating is unacceptable. Beating is unacceptable. And here, inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to be sharing with you some alternatives on how to definitely discipline your kids, inshallah ta'ala. We all need disciplining. I have that, you know, uh, I had that uh, uh, seminar called How to Raise Your Parents. Really, I called it How to Raise Your Parents. People are saying, really, sir, we need to be raised. I said, how to raise your parents. Yeah, this is what it's called, how to raise. Because sometimes parents, they also need to be raised. They need to be disciplined, you know. So how to raise your parents. So this first standard, brothers and sisters, no, the standard, you know, no to beating, no to hostility, no to, not to using force. For many reasons. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, إن الله رفيق يحب الرفق ويبغض على الرفق ويعطى على الرفق ما لا يعطي على العنف. In Sahih Muslim, the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم says that Allah سبحانه وتعالى is forbearer, gentle, الرفق, gentle, forbearer, and he loves forbearance and rewards for forbearance. Well, he does not reward for severity. الرفق, being gentle. The Prophet Muhammad عليه الصلاة والسلام says إن الله in Allah Rafiq or in the Rifq one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al Rafiq have you know that do you people know that one of the names of Allah Allah Azza wa Jal has many beautiful names this is the 99 names of Allah Azza wa Jal but Allah has more than 99 names one of the most beautiful one of the beautiful names of Allah Azza wa Jal is Al Rafiq comes from Rifq forbearance or gentleness 
he loves gentleness and he gives and he rewards for gentleness that which he does not reward for severity and force subhanahu wa ta'ala the prophet sallallahu says in sahih muslim wherever forbearance is added to something it adorns it when forbearance is added to something it adorns it it makes it beautiful and whatever it is withdrawn from something it leaves it defective subhanallah when rifq when rifq when forbearance is used on something it beautifies it and it, it, it is removed from something yani somebody who's harsh wow you don't want to hang out with that person a friend who's harsh a manager who's harsh in uh, um a father who's harsh a mom who's harsh a son who's rough you know anybody who's harsh you don't want to you know deal with those people you know you try to avoid them but somebody who's rafiq who's gentle even if you don't know them you like them you want to associate yourself with them because subhanallah of their qualities their their rifq, their gentleness also this uh um, the beating you know the force the use of force the use of force teaches your kids many bad stuff it teaches them to be hypocrites it teaches them to lie it teaches them to lie how 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 can beating my children teaches my children to lie can you give me an example Nasima silk 1998 you're a mom I think you're a mom. Can you give me an example of how beating up your children teaches them to lie? How? Huh? I can give you an example. Your child, he breaks something or she breaks something. And then you come and say, who broke this? She says, I did. I did. And then you beat them up. You beat him up or you beat her up. The next day next time she breaks or he breaks something and you ask you know who broke that they will not say i yes the next time exactly to avoid the beating they will say not me or they will say somebody else they will blame it on somebody else they may even swear that it was not them right and the fact that you beat them up regularly <laughs> they get used to it they get used to it yeah exactly they won't feel the beating no more they get used to it but i tell you sisters and brothers that you can get so much off of your children without using force you can get so much off of them you can get so many beautiful gems off of your children without using force i mean at some point yes i will tell you that punishment you know, if you want to punish, how to do it? I will share that with you, inshallah ta'ala. Maybe today. If you, khalas, after giving, and after going and exhausting all options, you have no other choice other than punishment, how should you punish your children? We will talk about that as well. Right? After, like I said, exhausting all possibilities and options, you have no other choice other than they really need to be punished. How should you punish them? But before that, there are certain things that you need to know, inshallah ta'ala. So remember foundation number 10. Khadija Muhammad Sheikh, Silk 1998, Nasima, Mariana, what is foundation number 10? What's principle number 10? I mentioned it today, all right? What is that foundation number 10 that I have mentioned? Come on. Facebook right there, Instagram right here. What is foundation number 10? I gave nine and today I shared with you number 10. Yes, that's true. That's him, that's true. Exactly. No to hostility. No to hostility. Exactly. Mariana, Yasmin, Khadija, no to force. Using no beating up your children is, I said, unacceptable unacceptable is illegal if you live in the west it is illegal number two 
it is no it is unacceptable خلاص لا للعنف exactly بالعربية no to العنف عنف عنيف إنسان عنيف in Arabic عنيف very hostile I want to share with you an ayah in Surah Al-Imran. I want to share with you an ayah from Surah Al-Imran, verse number 159. You know sometimes, brothers and sisters, that your children, you're punishing them and they don't even know what they've been punished. Sometimes, you, you know, there's certain parents who punish their children and their children don't, don't even know why they've been punished. You've been harsh. They don't even understand why you've been harsh. You're using force and you don't even know why you're using force. You're yelling and screaming and they don't even know why you're screaming and yelling at them. There's some parents who have anger management problem. There are there's some parents who do have an anger management problem. You know, they think that, you know, um, Fixing issues through screaming and yelling and beating would actually, you know, sort the children out and they would fix the problems. In fact, as I said, I promise you, you know, they will not solve the problem. You know, that method would never solve the problem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa O Muhammad. لو كنت فضا غليظا القلب لانفضوا من حولك If you were severe and hard, hard, harsh hearted, O oh Muhammad If you were severe and harsh hearted, they would break away from you Look at this This advice given to Prophet Muhammad This is a divine advice from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Coming to the Quran Telling Prophet Muhammad, O oh Muhammad, giving him a nasiha, if you were severe and harsh hearted with those people that you're giving da'wah to, they will break away from you. You know, when you're screaming, 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 all they hear is noise. They don't hear words. Do you understand? They do not hear words, they only hear noise. Uh, Nawal, do you scream at your, uh, well, you're not married, do you scream at your sisters? Huh? Mariana Muhammad, do you scream? Munisa, do you scream at your siblings? Maybe, I don't know. Do you? Mariana, do you scream at your children? I don't know if you have children. Nasima, do you scream? Sometimes. Sometimes. But do you always scream? Do you yell? Never? Really? Mariana, no? MashaAllah. Are you an angel? Huh? You're an angel? You never scream? You never scream? Munisa, you never scream. Nasima, okay, Zakallah khair. So, uh, somebody's not an angel out there. No need? I hate it. Yeah, huh? Hmm. Hmm. Well, that's what Allah is saying there, right? Because sometimes you, you, you know, they do something and then you feel like, oh, you, it just comes out from you, you start screaming, right? You start screaming. I mean, the tone goes, goes, and then, and then you realize that maybe you change your tone. But I'm talking about someone, I'm talking about someone who this is constant. It is how they, you know, they, they fix problems. So they, they deal with problems by screaming and yelling. Just so you know that the screaming and yelling your children or whoever you're screaming to, maybe your husband or your wife, they only hear noise. They don't hear words. You can scream all you want. <laughs> you scream after the sixth time. <laughs> you have to repeat yourself. Well, fair enough. <laughs> Nest habit. Fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. Uh, six times, come on, uh, six times, you know, I have to repeat myself. So after this, seven time is with Yani, look, with seven, seven, seven heavens, seven earth, seven tawaf, seven uh, safar marwa, seven. So seven, I give you seven chances, right? Six, seven, I have to scream. <laughs> All right, fair enough. 
الله اكبر uh, I tell you sisters and brothers punishing should not be the first you know uh, method to be used because it's not going to solve the problem I will give you alternatives I will give you alternatives You should have five to six methods and maybe you can share some with me inshallah ta'ala right you can share some with me today you know I will share with you maybe five six different methods on 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 um on uh, on how to um, inshallah ta'ala uh, raise your kids and and instead of using unf instead of using al unf instead of using force maybe you can try these other methods before resorting to punishment but first let me say salam to my sheikh musad ya halab sheikh musad assalamu alaikum let me go say salam to sheikh musad let me say say salam to sheikhuna sheikh musad I hope it will work with him this time. I really hope it will work with him this time. I hope it will work with him. If it does not work, قدر الله ما شفع. Imam Musad is here. Musad Musad is the the Qari from Montreal. You remember him? You know, during Eid, he came and he he mesmerized us with his amazing recitation. He's just joined. I wanted to uh, say salam to him. But uh, it's okay. I think the Sheikh is uh, maybe busy. Uh, we'll see if he can come back later on. I'll give you some alternatives, brothers and sisters. Remember the one I said that you should not do, uh, you know, like you, the uh, uh, favorism. Favorism. You know what favorism is? You favor one child over the other. And sometimes you say, no, no, they're all the same. All my children are the same. You know, I, I treat them the same. But sometimes without even you realizing that you are favoring one over another. An example, here's an example. You hug one, you don't hug the other. You kiss one, you don't kiss the other. You know, if you kiss one, you have to kiss the other. Even if the other one does not deserve it, kiss him or kiss her as well. You hug one, even if the other one does not need that hug, you hug him as well. This is called favorism. Ayuwa Sheikhna. Hi, Wa Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum. Oh, hello, hello, marhaba. Yeah, hello. Shaghal, Shaghal, now. Now, I'm going to see you. I'm, 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 طيب جاء جاء الخير لما جاء الخير ينفع اللهم لك الحمد احنا نقوله في المغرب احنا نقوله في المغرب وقت ما يجي الخير ينفع ينفع وقت ما يجا الان بعدين كده وقت ما يجي ينفع جعل الله اياك الغيث اينما حل نفع ان شاء الله امين امين واياكم شيخنا واياكم شيخنا احنا الان شيخنا نتكلم حول موضوع التربيه وقلت لهم في احد من الاسس الان نتكلم عن الاسس التربيه لا للعنف نعم نعم النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول علموا ولا تعنفوا فان المعلم خير من المعنف ايوه الله جل وعلا يقول والذين امنوا واتبعتهم ذريتهم بايمان الحقنا بهم ذريتهم ايوه احد رواه التفسير قالوا ان الايمان هنا هنا اللطف معناه اللطف والحنان صحيح الله يبارك فيك صبت بذاك الله فيك هذا هو الكلام وإن الله سبحانه وتعالى رفيق يحب الرفق ويعطي على الرفق ما لا يعطي على العنف سبحانه وتعالى والنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم حينما نريد أن نتتبع يعني المنهج التربوي الصحيح في تربية أبنائنا ومحبينا وذوينا علينا أن نهجو وأن نخطو خطوات حبيبنا صلى الله عليه وسلم النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ما كان فاحشا ولا متفحشا ولا بذيئا ولا قاسيا قط معاي بن الحكم السلمي وهو أحد الصحابة الكرام صلى خلف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يوما أحد الصلاة فلما صلى عطس فقال الحمد لله ينتظر القوم يقولون له شمتونه ورحمك الله ولم يكن يدر الصحابي أن قضية الكلام في الصلاة نسخت صحيح وأعتذر أم سوسو برادر سوسو إن شاء الله فرمي 
ما شاء الله ده الشيخ هو بلبل بلبل في العربية وبلبل في الإنجليزية وبلبل في الفرنسية هي سبيكس ما شاء الله فلوينت أرابيك فلوينت إنجليش and فلوينت فرنش ثلاثة لغات ما شاء الله يا شيخنا ما شاء الله لا 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 It's not like you, Sheikh Riyad, Mashallah. You are the best, Mashallah. You are our teacher, our Sheikh. Astaghfirullah, العظيم. Astaghfirullah, العظيم. تفضل شيخ. فسويد معاون الحركة السلامية لما عطس ما كان يدري ولا يعرف أن ال الكلام في الصلاة قد نسخ معنى لم يعد صالحا أو لم يعد جائزا. Yes. فإذا به ينظر إلى القوم وهم ينظرون إليه سبحان الله يسكتونه فلا يسكت. فكل ما بالكم ما بالهم يعني ما ماذا ما 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 ماذا تريدون يعني أنا سبحان الله قلت شيء غريب نعم. وهم يرمقونه بأبصارهم وهو يتكلم وما زالوا يضربون على أفخاذهم يسكتونه نعم. حتى قال لقد صنعت شيئا سيحاسبني عليه النبي ويعاقبني سبحان الله العظيم بعد الصلاة خوف شديد فقل فلما انتهت الصلاة انتظرت ردة قوية من النبي ولكنني وجدت يدا حانية وجدت صوتا خافتا وجدت وجها بشوشا يقول لي تعالى من المتكلم في الصلاة قلت أنا يا رسول الله فقال إنها إنها الصلاة لا يصلح فيها شيء من ذلك إنما هو الذكر والتسبيح وقراءة القرآن فقل سيدنا معاوية فما رأيت معلما قد خير من رسول الله فما سبني ولا شتمني ولا قهرني I will, I will, I will, I will, I will translate, inshallah. I will translate what the Sheikh is saying. Inshallah, Sheikh, you will make translation. Just, I share with him, and I leave now. I'm so sorry. No, Sheikh, you came. You came. خلاص. You have to give us ولو two minutes كده قراءة كده. Everybody's asking for Facebook. You said, Sheikh, we want to hear you. ولو one minute, two minutes كده وتطلع. سلام عليكم. بس أول عمل translation بعدين لما تخلص إنشالله. إن شاء الله يقول فما سبني ولا شتمني ولا قهرني ولكنه قال لي أنها الصلاة لا يصلح فيها شيء من ذلك لذلك منهج النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الآن كان منهج اللطف والحنان منهج الوئام منهج الحديث بصوت طيب بعدم شيء بعدم وجود شيء من العنف أو التزج صلى الله عليه وسلم هكذا استطاع أن يصل إلى قلوب أصحابه صلى الله عليه وسلم بهذا المنهج اللي هو منهج الذي نقول عنه إنه منهج أقول ما الصوت الخافت الأسلوب الهادي الكلمات الحانية الراقية التي يكسوها جمالا وبهاء صلى الله عليه وسلم فاستطاع أن يصل بأسلوبه ذلك إلى كل من كان حوله سبحان الله العظيم عليه الصلاة والسلام فمن هنا نتعلم منه صلى الله عليه وسلم يعني أننا ينبغي أن نكون حلماء حليم نعم صحيح حلماء الله أكبر في المنهى في تربية أبنائنا وبناتنا الصوت العالي لا يجدي ولا ينفع ولا يغني شيئا ولا يربي ولا يقوم معوجا ولا يصلح مخت أبدا لذلك صلى الله عليه وسلم ما رأينا حتى مع السيدة مع نسائه صلى الله عليه وسلم نراه كان حليما نراه كان عطوفا نراه كان كريما نراه كان صوت صوت صلى الله عليه وسلم فحينما حينما كان تدخل عليه السيدة فاطمة رضي الله عنها والتي منها آل البيت ماذا كان يصنع صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يقوم من مجلسه ويقبلها بين عينيها ويجلسها مكانا صلى الله عليه وسلم في أفضل من كذا من يصنع ذلك مع أبناء وبنات اليوم ربما احنا عادين في هذه الفترة وهذه المحنة الشديدة والبعض ربما يتضجر ربما يخرج من البيت ربما يقول كلاما ربما يقول إليه ما كنت خلفتكم ولا كنت شيطكم سبحان الله كذلك حياة دونكو أفضل أشياء كثيرة جدا 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 مع أن الله قال زينة الحياة وأترك المجال لفضلت الشيخ رياض الله يزخير بس قبل 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 ما تروح شيخنا ولو تفتح يعني تنغمنا ولو أي شيء إن شاء الله تعالى أي شيء من 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 عندكم إن شاء الله تعالى الإخوان بيطلبون وي وي ويقولوا يبغوا يسمعون صوت الشيخ إذا كان يعني تتحفنا بشيء الله يفتح لك الله يصلي أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم
شاء الله على الارائك ينظرون تعرف في وجوههم نظرة النعيم الله 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 يسقون من رحيق مختوم ختامه مسك ختامه مسك وفي ذلك فليتنافس المتنافسون فتح الله عليك شيخنا ما شاء الله عليك ما شاء الله قوه الا بالله ما شاء الله قوه الا بالله اتحفتنا الله يا ربي يفتح عليك باب الخير في الدنيا والاخره ان شاء الله تعالى امين حبيبي يا شيخنا كما قال قال اوتيت مزمار من مزامير داوود ما شاء الله لا قوه الا بالله ما شاء الله لا قوه الا بالله ما شاء الله لا قوه الا بالله الله يحفظك جزاك الله عنا خير بارك الله فيك حياك الله فما بالك حياك الله معكم الساحه مرحبا بك ذير يو جو That was uh, Sheikh Musad Beltegui, Beltegui from, uh, from Montreal. Uh, he joined us. So he mentioned uh, as something that we've been talking about throughout Alhamdulillah, the series. And he gave an example of uh, the Sahabi, this little boy who was praying behind the Prophet Muhammad. And then as they were praying in the masjid, he started talking. He did not know because initially the people were talking during the salah and then and the, but he did not know that it was abrogated that they no longer can talk you know you no longer can talk during the salah and then he started asking questions and people are praying and then there he's looking at them he says you know why are you not replying back to me why are you not you know talking back what did i say what did i and you know and he's talking during the salah people are praying and he's he's like asking questions and and then he realized oh boy maybe i shouldn't be talking and then if, if um, you know, after the Salah, the Prophet will be so mad at me, he will yell at me, he will, he will you know, uh, he will uh, you know, tell me off, he would do this, he would do that, you know. So he was really scared. So after the Salah, he was really, you know, scared and terrified. And then the Prophet asked, who's the, the, the boy who was talking? And then, and then he came and said, I, Ya Rasulullah. And then the Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, nicely, he says, I did not, he did not scream, he did not yell, he did not punch or beat me up or anything. He used very beautiful voice, he used very tone, you know, like a low tone with me. Uh, and he says, this salah, it is meant for tasbih, takbir, uh, and nothing else. You know, once in the salah, you cannot, you know, you shouldn't be talking. That's how he, you know, uh, corrected that mistake, Ali said. And we mentioned stories like that before, if you remember. I mentioned many stories you know, of, of examples of how the Prophet Muhammad, you know, uh, dealt with certain situations. In fact, I want to share with you uh, another story. And this comes under the these methods that I'm going to be giving you. Method number one is, can you forgive? Forgive. Before you punish, try to forgive. So this is number one. Al-Afu. Forgive. وَالْقَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْضَ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Those who repress anger. Your child did something really bad. Your teenager son, your adult son, daughter, right? Did something really bad that you felt like they, they have broken all types of rules and you need to punish them or somehow, right? So those who repress anger, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Surah Al-Imran, verse number 134. Those who repress anger and those who pardon. Those who pardon. Number one, you pardon. Let me give you an example. An example was in Fath Mecca. During Fath Mecca, uh, um, uh, came a man 
as the Prophet Muhammad forgave, forgave Quraysh, you know, forgave them. Those are his own, you know, relatives, people that, you know, from Quraysh who kicked him out when he came back. You know, he could have taken his revenge. Yet, he decided to forgive them. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Came a man by the name of Fudala. Fudala. A man by the name of Fudala. Bi Khanjar, Yawm Fath Mecca. After the Prophet forgave and everything, this man came with a knife. He wanted to kill Prophet Muhammad And he's behind the Prophet Muhammad He's hiding his knife. The Prophet turned to him. He saw him. He says, What is your nafs? What is your soul telling you to do all Fudala? Fudala says, I'm just making dhikr of Allah. But who is he talking to? He's talking to Prophet Muhammad. This is not a regular man. This is not a, you know, just a man. This is a prophet. He gets revelations. The prophet knew. Fudala, bima tuhadithuka nafsuk. What is your nafs telling you to do? He says, I'm just making dhikr of Allah. Then Fudala said, this is Fudala he's narrating. He says, then the prophet, he smiled at me. Ibtasama, he smiled at me. Oh Fudala, fear Allah. He said, Oh Fudala, fear Allah. And he started touching my chest. And then he's, you know, wiping on my chest and caressing it. And he says, Oh Fudala, Oh Fudala, ittaqillah. Ittaqillah, fear Allah. And he's doing this to him. Fudala said, Kana abghadu nas an nasa ilayh. كان أبغض أهل الأرض إليه إلى قلبي ثم صار أحب أهل الأرض إلى قلبي فضالة he said that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he was the most hated man on earth from in my heart I hated him the most on earth and after that I loved him the most on earth يعني on earth there was nobody else I loved the most other than Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Prophet Muhammad knew that this man had a knife and he wanted to kill him. But he smiled and he started, you know, wiping on his chest sallallahu alayhi wa This is option number one. Forgive. Option number two. Share your feelings. This is I'm talking about, you know, before using punishment. These are methods to be used before using punishment. I said punishment is the very last resort, right? Your kid did something really terrible and they deserve to be punished. What are some of the preliminaries actions? These are some of the preliminaries actions that you could use. Number one, forgive. Wa'fu. Number two, use your feelings and share your feelings. You know what does this do to your children who sharing your feelings with them? Something like, I'm really sad. I'm really disappointed. I'm really disappointed not at you, my son or my daughter. I'm disappointed at me, me, the dad, me, the mom. I'm disappointed at myself because I did not know how to raise you. I failed. I'm upset at myself, not at you, because I failed as a dad. I failed as a mom. And you show that you're really sad, you're really disappointed. Share your feelings. I'm not going to talk about his problem and what he did or what she did. I'm going to talk about me and my feelings. This is, a, this is an, an option. You could use. You could use that. I'm just going to focus on how sad I am, how disappointed I am, how upset I am. Not at him or her, but at myself, at yourself. That actually, it just causes them so much pain from inside. They may not show it to you. They will go to their room and they will think about it. I made my mom sad. I made my dad disappointed. This is number two. You know what Anas, Anas radiallahu anhu, he used to work at the house of the Prophet he was 10 years old. And you know when you're 10 years old you could make mistakes. Prophet Muhammad one day he gave him some money he says go and you know, buy so, you know, this, you know, buy some he needed some uh, something, you know, from the market. Go and get it for me. Anas, um, he got late. Prophet Muhammad went out into the streets of Medina. And then he saw him playing. He saw Anas playing with kids. 
<laughs> you send your kid to run around and then you see your kids playing outside and then you needed what you know you needed that thing that you sent him to buy you you needed it but he just forgot about it and he went to play he's a 10 year old kid for god's sake you know he's not an adult he's 10 year old he forgot he was playing with kids did the prophet get angry did he start beating him up and slapping and he went to him he stood behind him and then Anas looked at him Anas he looked in front of Prophet Muhammad behind him he says Anas Alam Ursiluk, didn't I send you to take care of so and so and such and such he says oh yes ya Rasulullah I'm going right now I'm going right now Anas said is Anas when he reads the story when he became old he never read it he says you know, I worked with, and I lived with Prophet Muhammad, you know, for 10 years, I've never heard him yelling or scolding me. He never scolded me. 10 years old. He, 10 years old, it's, you know, he could be naughty. He says, Prophet Muhammad never scolded me or told me, why didn't you do so and so? Why didn't you? That's number two. Number three, method number three, something that you could use instead of punishment. Number three, motivate them. Motivate your kids. Motivate them with what? With money? Maybe, sometimes, why not? Motivate them with what? With initiatives? Incentives? Yes, why not? Why not? Uh, Ibn Sirin, Ibn Sirin, very well-known, pious predecessor from the past, you know, uh, the very well-known, you know, uh, dream uh, translation book by Ibn Sirin, very well known in dream interpretations. He's in is Ibn Sirin. He's from the pious predecessors. Uh, Ibn Sirin, he used to give his child one dirham whenever he memorizes an ayah from the Quran. Whenever he memorizes like a surah from the Quran, he gives him one dirham. Motivate them. Motivate your children. If you were to memorize this, if you were to do this, I will give you, you know, but don't make it a habit Every time you have to, oh, you know, oh, you, you have to give me so I can do this for you. Don't make it a habit. But from time to time, you can motivate them with, uh, inshallah, this summer, I will get you into this youth camp. You wanted to go to that youth camp? I will, inshallah, ta'ala, enroll you into the youth camp, right? Motivate them. You want that halal party, inshallah, ta'ala? We will have that halal party once you're done with your hifz. We will have that halal party, inshallah, ta'ala. Once you're done with your program, then inshallah, ta'ala. Once you get that, inshallah, ta'ala, I will get this for you, inshallah. You want to buy that? I will, you know, but you get this, inshallah. Motivate them. Use some sort of incentives to motivate your children. That's method number three. Method number four, fix the problem yourself. Or fix the problem together. Fix the problem together. He broke something, right? And he does not know how to fix it. And he was not so supposed to do so, right? He just made a mistake or he was not paying attention. He was careless. He broke it or he, you know, whatever. Go fix the problem together. Don't just tell him why. Or, no, no, where was your brain? Where was your mind? Where was your head? Why are you always uh, careless? Why are you always heedless? Fix the problem together. That's, prob that's method number four. Method number five, it's called parenting or bonding or parents bonding. What does that mean, parents bonding? When was the last time you and your child, you and your daughter, you and your, I'm talking about before Corona, right? Before the lockdown. The last time you went on a bonding with your son, with your daughter, on a, uh, maybe a, going out for a, a coffee or tea or juice or uh, just on a walk uh some time together just bonding together on outing together with your son and then you talk with your daughter talk out prophet muhammad used to do it he used to do it with abu huraira he did it with anas he did it with muad he did he did it with abdullah ibn abbas abdullah ibn abbas they took them out into the outskirts and then on the way as they're walking out and then he would tell them some advice sallallahu alaihi wasallam when was the last time you bonded with your child you dated your child yeah, date, dating. Every evening does not mean I'm bonding with them here at home. We bonding together. No, bonding means you bond out the out, with them outside. Yes, yes, we bonded together. You know, together in front of the TV. We bonded in front of the TV. No, that does not. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about that bond in front of the TV or front of this or that on the home. I'm talking about an outing outside with your children. 
to teach them something, to give them an advice, but that advice outside, right? So these are some of the methods that you could use. But if you decide that, you know, say, Sheikh, I've done everything, I've done everything, everything, and they, it, they must be, they need to be punished. They need to be punished. I will tell you maybe five action items to do before you punish your children. Because you said, I've used everything. I've used bonding. I've used forgiving. I've used uh, correcting the mistakes together. I've used motivating. I've used, I've used uh, all these methods, Sheikh, was something you thought of and something you didn't mention. I've used so many things. You name it, I, mentioned, I, I did it, right? I've used everything. But this that they have done, they really require to be punished. They have to be punished. So if you are adamant on punishing them, here are maybe five or six points to do before you punish them. Write them down. Write them down. Are you taking notes, sisters and brothers? Those of you on Instagram, Instagram right here. Those of you on Facebook, I'm going to share with you some five or six pointers to do, right? Before you punish them. Because halas, you said, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to punish them. Okay, you want to punish them, right? Before you punish them, I'm going to share with you five or six pointers to do right before you punish them. You're going to punish them. Halas, we agreed, you're going to punish them. But here are five or six pointers. Do them before you punish them. Right? Are you guys ready? Writing them down? Writing them down? Definitely Cliffy, huh? Definitely Cliffy. Are you guys ready? You guys are not ready. You're not even taking notes. Are you taking notes? I'm going to give you something like gold now. Gold, gold, like literally gold. Literally gold. Yasmin? Huh? Mariana? Medina Muhammad? All right. Layla, are you ready? Nez, Thabit? <laughs> All right. Well, I guess you, the only one who smelled it was uh, Umail Umail smelled it it is definitely a cliffhanger for tomorrow inshallah ta'ala for tomorrow make sure you come and tomorrow it will be again about parenting both inshallah ta'ala bring your children bring your children tomorrow they've got to come and listen to this inshallah ta'ala because tomorrow section and session will be about parents together we spoke about children we spoke about Parents, we spoke about moms, we spoke about dads. Now we're going to speak about the parents together, inshallah ta'ala. It is a cliffhanger. We will meet you tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala, at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time, 11 o'clock p.m. UK Time for episode number 11 of Homemade Happiness. It was great seeing you all. It was great being back again. Jazakumullah khair, brothers and sisters. Instagram will go off in 9 Eight, seven, six, five. Jazakum Allah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Facebook, I will see you tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.